Welcome to No Holds Bar. I am Mark Williamson and our very first guest this evening, a man who is a multiple champion. He is the Kingdom Pro Wrestling Champion. He is the Australian Wrestling Revolution Champion. He is the Underworld Wrestling Champion and the Warzone Wrestling Champion. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for Slade Mercer. Big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here tonight in this Swish Bar, having a few drinks, chatting about wrestling. Thank you for the incredible introduction. I, can't, I couldn't have done it better myself. Oh, thank you very much, babe. Thank you very much. So, how long have you been in Australia wrestling for? When was 2010 you arrived? Yes. Uh, so, I began training in 2005. Uh, and uh, a few years in New Zealand wrestling in New Zealand. And then I moved to Australia in 2010. Before that, though, you wrestled for PWA Queensland. I believe that's when we first met. Yes, that's when you and I first met. Yes, so, yes. Uh, yeah, PWA Queensland, the the, the massive indie uh, sensation that it was back yeah, in those days. Yeah, uh, the place to be. Yeah, hundred percent. Everyone in Australia was going up to Queensland to wrestle, and There's Chris Hero, Chris out, Hero, Shadow yeah. Phoenix, yeah. Um, incredible stuff. So Sarah I, Del Rey. I forgot about Sarah Del Rey Sarah actually. Del Rey, yeah. um, people yeah. even forget that well, she's the trainer at NXT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I got in touch with Mason Charles. Yep. The uh, the Australian Wolf, as he's known. Amazing. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. allegedly, Mason Charles, or allegedly the Australian Wolf. Allegedly the Australian Wolf. Yeah, who knows who it is. Okay. Um, and uh, we've gotten in touch through MySpace. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I remember those days, guys. Oh, I remember Mason Childs was my uh, top friend. Oh, one of your top friends? One of your top friends there. Yeah, that was like, you know, when everyone had like music that played on their profile yeah. when you opened yeah. it. And had Tom and Mason Childs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How many uh, profiles were you open? It was like My Chemical Romance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, then, then I went to Queensland. I went there a couple of times and after wrestling in New Zealand for so long and I was feeling like I needed to get out, I needed to do something and I'd gone to Queensland. I went there once, I wrestled uh, there at the Valley Show, yes. um, which is when I first met you. And then a year later I came back, they had like a festival type show, they had two weeks worth of gigs. Yeah. Uh, the Echo, which is the Brisbane equivalent of the Royal Show. Yeah, the Melbourne Show. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so they call it the Echo up there. Um, and then I decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave New Zealand, I'm gonna pursue uh, wrestling and we moved to Australia to try and get better, try and improve, um, uh, wrestle more people, you know, that type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, and when I first got here, well, just prior to coming here, I received a message from Mark. And Mark had met me, he, he uh, knew me through Mason as well, and he was confident in my ability. He read out, reached out to me because it was a new promotion. Yes. Starting up coincidentally just as I was due to arrive. So I was like, oh, this is, this is perfect. Yes. Um, would you like to fill in a little more? Oh, well, see, I wasn't the promoter. I was help booking yeah. this promotion. It was called Smash X Wrestling. And it was run by a, the owner of the promotion was a lady that organized um, yeah. bikini models for like various one. contests in pubs. When you have bikini model contests, she was the one who organized all the models and all that sort of stuff. But she talked a lot about like the People magazine. Yeah, talked to, did all like, yeah, people like, magazine. Those types of things. Was it? Hey, Pastry models. Ra Ra Ralph. Ralph. Yeah, Ralph. Ralph that right. magazine. Yeah, yeah. The, the Ralph swimsuit contest. Which nobody really buys now because yeah. porn's free. Well, yeah, well, all, the, all, all those magazines shut down. Yeah, like, all those magazines shut down. Um, but, but she wanted to get involved in the wrestling business. She enjoyed it. So basically, she got me to book some of the best talent from around Australia for this brand, brand new show that's yeah. going to be great. And we're going to start it with a fundraiser for the Blue Mountains Bushfire Brigade. Got it. Like, I actually got it on uh, TV. There was a spot, all that sort of stuff. I was a spot on TV to promote all that sort of stuff. But the show ended up being the biggest goddamn shit fight anyone had ever been involved in. She hadn't contacted the Bushfire Brigade. So this fundraiser, they had no idea about. So when I'm trying to get them to do the TV thing, they had no idea. We did it at this uh, at my old high school in the Blue Mountains. And I think, what, 40 people showed up? It Maybe. was just Horrid. Um, it was just horrid, <laughs> and it was funny for me because it was. This was my first experience. Yeah. Up, just moved to Australia. Yeah. I'm thinking, wow, mm. like there's this television thing, like, and it was guys like like Carla Cannon, yeah, Carla um, Cannon, um, 
Tyson Gibbs, yeah. uh, a lot of these guys that were like up on the scene at the time. So I was like, oh, well, this is really exciting to get them on the ground floor with us. But it was again, it was one of those like lessons you learn in wrestling. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And so I remember afterwards, nobody got paid. Um, and we were all, no, that's yeah. Oh, we'll pay you on your bank account. And it never shows up. Um, but as I recall, you did do a little pushing. And I did end up actually getting something. Yes, yes. I, I, I got pretty much half the crew. I, I ended up getting most of the pay. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of pushing and I might have defecated on her front wall. I was going to see, look. <laughs> I was, is an interesting word. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up. You, you did that. No, I figured that. But yeah, no, <laughs> but, but as I said, it was, it, was a very, it was your first experience to this was my first the shadiest first. side of the street. But everything was going good with it. You know, they had, uh, you know, they had beautiful dropping you know all, all the media for it looked great yeah everything looked cool everything like, looked phenomenal and all, all the, the aprons and yeah. all the stuff like all the branding looked great but it just yeah just completely yeah fun. but yeah magic <laughs> so. um so then that, that so that was my first experience because yeah. yeah. there was uh, new south wales i remember you touched down in new south wales and you're moving down here to uh milk no, uh, I moved to Brisbane. Moved to Brisbane, yes. Uh, yes. I lived in Brisbane for two years, wrestling with PWA Queensland, various promotions around there. Um, and then I got the same pitch that I'd had in New Zealand. I was yep. thinking, well, I need to move on. I need to wrestle new people. I want to grow. I want to learn more. Um, so then the next step from there was England. Yes, yes. And how was England? That was before the big boom in the... Uh, English wrestling industry. I'm really so, glad you pointed that out. Yeah, it was. It. Yeah, yeah no, 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 I'm just asking. <laughs> it was, like, <laughs> it was yeah. like, you've wrestled all these guys that are massive superstars, and it's just. I'm just you're kind of a left, left just <laughs> as. Left just as it got big. I was gonna say, how, does that, how does that make you feel? I was going to say, can I just very quickly chip in? Because I do wonder about that. We've obviously had some amazing Australian talent and New Zealand talent go over there. Yeah. Is it a case of right time? right place Ooh, yeah it is always a matter of right time right place anywhere to be seen by the right person at the right time to be in the right city when this person's there and that person's there mm-hmm. all of these things like it's all the way your ducks line up mm-hmm. um so uh, yeah so i did so you are right i was in england i was in england from 2012 to 2014 and yeah pretty much right up or in the few years in the lead up to what was there now boom period yeah. um, and I saw it like I saw that happening that's why I chose to go to England because I was went from being in Australia and I'd gone to America and I'd done that for a little bit and I was like well I, I sort of saw what American Indies were like and I was like well unless I'm going to go there for a long time and establish myself it's really going to be just spot shows that don't mean anything and don't actually build anything right not to mention, I also really enjoyed the British style, and I wanted to learn more about that. So, um, so yeah, I just I packed my bags and packed myself, and I went. And I remember, I remember my first match in England. So I'd gone to a show. So there's a company called All Star Wrestling. Oh, classic, right? I mean, yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, so obviously people here wouldn't understand, but I mean, All Star Wrestling is the company in England. Is that the holiday they did the camps and that sort of stuff? Yeah. 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 Now but they're Brian not. Dixon? Yes, Brian Dixon. Yeah, world well, yeah. famous promoter, right? Um, now it's not an indie company, so it doesn't get the same sort of accolades that the, the yeah. indie companies do because it's not what they do. But they draw massive. They run in great town halls. They do holiday camps and they put on family. Yep. Um, not to mention the guys that do that are real workers and when I say that I mean like they're doing it on the fly they're, they're, you know all these types of things it's all these techniques so um, my first match I'd landed in England and I'd gone to an all-star show and I said hey I'm so and so like let me help out can I help the ring rah rah whatever um, and I'm lucky because I'm a big dude so I think a lot of people you know the promoter might take a look at me oh, at least I'll give him a shot because he looks like yeah. a wrestler look the good correct I'm lucky like that genius um, so then he was like, okay, yeah, we'll come to, literally, he booked me on the next show at the tour, which is the next day in a different town. He was like, get to this town and we'll put you on. I'm like, okay, cool. Now, um, I had my first match with a guy named James Mason. Sorry, there's an English guy in the corner and I keep smiling. Yeah, there's Agnes. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's going 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 to hands hands are flapping around. I'm <laughs> just doing my group permission. Ooh! James Mason <laughs> is an incredible professional wrestler. James Mason is a 
professional wrestler's favorite professional wrestler. Okay. That is how good he is. Yeah. And he's also, he's so good that he doesn't care. Like, like he doesn't even stress, like, we, I went to talk to him about the match and he was like, all right, I'm going to do this, this, and this, this is the finish, I'll see you out there, and he walked out. And I was like, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm not that good, right? But I was, so then I remember getting in the ring with him and I remember working with him and I was like, this is another level. I, I was like, not a, I'm out of my depth, but this is where I need to be. Yeah. This is where I'm going to get better. This is, and, and that's what that first match taught me. I was like, oh, wow, I'm not as good as I thought I was. And, and that's, it's been a, a trend, but I think it's a good thing because like, you need to have that confidence in your ability, but at the same time, you need to be able to go, oh, actually, I'm not that good. Take a step back and go, you know what, yeah, that's made me humble. Okay, now I know what things I need to do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and some guys will get to that point, and they'll get to that point and go, you know, oh, maybe I'm not good enough, and they'll go back, and they'll retreat, and you know what, they'll come back to a smaller place and go, I'd rather be a big fish in a small pond, I don't want to push myself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that was my first match. Two years in England, and I was doing the camps. I was going around, and and like yeah, you talked about, you mentioned it before about guys that are like massive stars now. Like I was on the road with Marty Skrull. I was on the road with Jimmy Havoc. And that's when he was Party Marty. Yeah, he was Party Marty. He wasn't even like we hadn't even figured out his villain persona yet. Um, where I Spud. Oh yeah, don't, yeah. This is and this is this ties into like how Ali uh, ended up, you know, not. So where I where I lived in England, I for, uh, lived in London for a few weeks, and London is hectic. Like I'm from a small town in New Zealand, and every time I've moved, I've sort of moved to bigger cities because I'm a city person, yep. and I enjoy that vibe. And Melbourne's a great city, but um, London's, something else. London's next level of gear. Like. You get to London and you can either handle it or you can't. And I was like, I, I can say, no, that's too much. Like, even just on the few times that I went, I couldn't imagine living there Monday to Friday, getting on the tube every day, the kind of, like, just people everywhere. Um, so I lived, for the most part, I lived in Birmingham, which is in the Midlands, um, thanks mostly to Marcus Cool. Marcus Cool, uh, being a British wrestler, he moved to New Zealand and him I met there. Um, and he let me stay with his family, so that was, that was amazing. Um, and through that time I was learning and I was, I was improving and spoke with the world. And this was just before the TNA British Boot Camp, if you remember that. Yes. yes. Yeah. So British Boot Camp came around and uh, it was funny because I don't know, only a few months earlier I'd been hanging out with Marty and going to gym with him and now here I am with Spud and those two arrivals on the show. Um, and Spud, who now Drake Maverick, for yeah. those of you who don't know, um, he's a legitimate five foot six. Very short. Tiny, tiny Very person. Short. Very short. But petite. I'm, but I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> he would have liked the word petite. He's a, <laughs> he's a great opponent to have. He made all my power moves amazing. It's like, and I'm like five foot six. Yeah. But, like, and, but what, when you're that small, I mean, it applies in real life, not just the wrestling. You compensate. Yeah. And he he is an incredible mouthpiece. Yeah. Yeah. He is an incredible promo man. He knows how to react. He, he can do comedy. He can do sadness. I mean like natural comedy. Credit to to him. Like, yeah, that's it. Like and he's not afraid to make fun of his own size because he knows it. Right? He's comfortable with the fact that he gets that he was told for all his life he was never gonna get a job. But the fact that he's unique. Yes he's small, but he's unique. And I mean, come on, like you watched all that 24 hour series. Yeah, yeah. Time mm. run, and the fact he had his wedding, like all of the stuff. And he got multiple jobs. He worked in TNA, then went, went to WWE. I mean, it's not just. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah he got. So, the TNA thing, British Boot Camp was happening. Um, just a little insight into that. British Boot Camp was essentially created as a platform for the Blossom Twins. Yeah. That was always the intention. So, so, here we've got two gorgeous British blonde girls that are wrestlers. We're going to sign them to impact. Yeah. Whatever happened to them? Oh, I can tell you all about them. Well, oh, is this all the camera? No, 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 he knows. All the stuff was going on when OBW yeah. was impact about them. So right. I had this is cool. for a lot of and, yeah. so, and so, like, here I am in England, and yeah, this is how Ali and I end up becoming fast friends, is because he knows all these people, and I know all these people. And another one, Dave Mastiff, who, um, yeah. Yeah, currently signed to WWE NXT. Um, so, yeah, like, like, Quick Jimmy Havoc story. I met Jimmy Havoc at a show. 
I'd been booked on the show. Typically, you don't know who you're going to work with. Uh, was for Premier Promotions? No, I know Premier. You know Premier. Uh, and so I arrived and I got to, okay, you're in a tag team match, two out of three falls, half an hour, you and Jimmy Havoc versus uh, Flash Barker and someone else. Flash is awesome, Flash is fantastic. Um, and in England they work in much smaller rings, so the ring would have been 14. Uh, 14 feet for those of you playing. Um, and I remember, so we do the thing, and because it's British, it's two out of three falls, it's a tag match, I'm like, it's going to be long. And the opening spot, they give Jimmy Havoc a back, uh, the dude gives Jimmy Havoc a back body drop, but the ring's small and he's out of position, so Jimmy Havoc flips over, his legs clip the top rope, and his head smacks against the mat. Concussion. Five minutes into a 30 minute match. So, <laughs> so uh, Jimmy, Jimmy manages to, like the referee's sort of freaking out, Jimmy manages to make his way to the corner for me to take him out, and I'm like, cool, I'm just calling this whole thing. And we, just, we still went half an hour, and we were booked to win, and we still went over. Yeah, and you can yeah, see, yeah. like, you can go, you can, there's a picture of, like, us getting our hands raised by the referee, you see just glassed over on Jimmy's face. He was meant to work a rumble after that, too. We got backstage, he forgot, he didn't even realise he'd been out there already. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he was like, yeah, I'm out there, I'm going to go do the rumble. I said, no, you're all right, there, man. It's not your rumble. Just, just stay there. Um, so, yeah, I did wrestle with and learn from a lot of these guys before they got big. Do I, how do I feel about it booming after I left? You know what, it's just a, it's a timing thing. There's nothing I can yeah. do about it. And yeah. I went there, I learnt from these guys, and you know what, my visa ran out. Um, I wasn't going to marry anyone to stay. Yeah, yeah. Because um, it's like two years. Uh, two years, years yeah. Sort of thing. It's yeah. 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 Australians and New Zealanders yeah. get a working uh, holiday visa, which allows yeah. you to go there for two years. Yeah. Um, and I've got no, no grandparents, no heritage to be able to uh, get a passport. So, um, so then it was like, well, what do I do now? So I had to leave England. And I was like, well, I can go back to New Zealand. But I knew that whilst New Zealand scene has grown massively since, mm. and it's doing great now. Yeah. It felt like a backward step. And so I was thinking, well, I could go back to Australia. And then the thought was, well, I don't necessarily want to go back to Brisbane because I've been there, done that. And in the time since I've been in England, PW Queensland had sort of fallen away. And we've been all away, sold, and sold all sorts of companies else. pop up in yeah. the place, and it was all just looking bad. Um, but Melbourne, even when I was in Queensland and throughout my time in England, always seemed like this sort of beat. Yeah. Always seemed like the sort of hub of wrestling where there was like quality talented guys. It was the, the funny thing because when everyone's working up in Queensland, that's when it was kind of dead down here in Melbourne. It's when PWA finished, PCW weren't running very much. So there was a few little promotions running, and basically Brisbane took over the place of what Melbourne was. Then when Mel when Brisbane kind of started business, kind of you know wasn't going as well. Melbourne picked up, you know, with the, they said you had um, MCW start, you had Warzone start, so you had two solid promotions of the place. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a good choice moving down. Yeah, so then, so then the idea was like, well, I'll move to Melbourne, and I also had the advantage of knowing people, knowing wrestlers already in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, some people know, and like, this was my very, very first foray. I toured Australia when I was 19. Um, through NAW, we'd been brought across because NAW had secured a Tasmania show. Yeah. All right. These infamous, oh, dude, these infamous Tasmania shows. So um, NAW had organised or found the guy who wanted to promote in Tasmania, and he brought me and another wrestler from New Zealand to come and do it. And that's when I first met Tang. I first met. Pitbull, I first met Tony Hellfire, um, as well as names of guys that aren't around, like um, Break Priest, and, um, yeah. um, Ken, and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> so like, uh, I'm a bright-eyed 19-year-old, I'm coming to Australia to wrestle, first met Vixen, all these people, um, and it was like nothing else. Was, so like, I met these guys at 19, so I thought, oh well maybe if I move to Melbourne, I'll drop in the line, like, I'm sure they'll be able to help me. Um, Tommy has been fantastic. Tommy, um, who and I are fantastic mates, helped me out so much when I first got here. Um, and so, yeah, so I felt comfortable coming to Melbourne because I knew people. And I mean, um, Pitbull, and I've had some great matches since I've been back. Um, 
So yeah, uh, it was felt like the right place to come and, and take the next step in the rest of it. So, and, and now leading now, as I said, you know, you, you've been down to Melbourne, you've been set up now, you're winning belts all around Australia. So let's break down. You have what a belt in South Australia? Yes, Australia, Australia Wrestling Wrestling Revolution. Revolution yeah, which you, I believe don't have at the moment. No, but that that belt was stolen. Belt was uh, stolen, as happens at wrestling shows. Yes. Uh, uh, they're a new company. They yeah. started earlier this year. Reached out to me, wanted to start fresh. Adelaide is really growing in terms of their scene. Yes. Um, for a long time, it felt like it was only maybe one major company. Um, lately, I know there's about there's about four companies. Yes. Um, the ones I can think of the top of my head for RCW, ACW, AWR, and also WrestleMania. Um, and coming from England, where I learnt about how guys work together, and about, like for example, when they bring an international over, I know it happens here now, but in England, when they bring, say, a Jay Lethal. The companies reach out to one another and they say, hey, you want to do a deal, do this, do this, everyone yeah. shares the flights, and then all of a sudden Jay Lethal's working in five companies instead yeah. of just one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so like, I saw all this type of stuff and I was like, okay, well, that's where I, where I want to be and where I want to do. So um, AWR, they're doing great stuff, and the companies in Adelaide are starting to work together because they realize that. Well, for example, if you're only wrestled at RCW and you've wrestled there all over your career, you've probably wrestled everybody 10 times over. Yeah. There's only so much improvement you can get. The next step is wrestling with someone outside of that, learning new things. And so um, I'm always a proponent of stepping outside, trying to do those things, trying to learn from new people. I'm never, I, and, but this is from a wrestler's perspective, I can understand a promoter's perspective and wanting to keep those clubs tight. Um, so AWR's doing great stuff. Uh, I love it. You've got the Kingdom Pro, which is up in New South Wales. Yes, Kingdom Pro Wrestling in uh, Newcastle and Maitland. Yes. Uh, again, another new company. Um, born from the ashes of Hunter Valley Wrestling, which was doing amazing stuff up there for a long time. Can I, can I just say, that is a beautiful championship, isn't it? That is really just for the, uh, yeah. Yeah. the uh, <laughs> really appreciate it. Cool um, but yeah, the, I do like the detailing of the blue and the white. Um, Got the phoenix, raising out of the phoenix in the Hunter Valley. Yeah, there, there you go. Symbolism. Uh, yeah. um, and when, uh, when it comes to championships and, and, and you're and, and champion of four companies, I don't know what other wrestlers think. Like, I don't know. Like, they must think that I, I don't know. That I, Politic all the time, yeah. Or that I'm always a messenger, or that I like pay the promoter to get given the belt, or like that I put a deposit down so I can have them. Like it's none of that. It's the fact that they put their faith in me, they put their trust in me, and I can come from the live life. So it's a massive privilege, and I do take it seriously, and I treat them with respect. That's another thing. Like if you, these things aren't cheap. They are not cheap. They are not cheap. They are not cheap. So just the fact that you are willing to, like, we know who owns this belt. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a very nice belt. Yeah. And the gentleman who owns this belt only lets me have it because he trusts me. Yeah. There are gentlemen who have been the champion that he doesn't let them take it home because he doesn't trust it. <laughs> I love how you're almost stroking the belt as <laughs> you revere it so much. It's just one of those things. Like I treat, I treat it the way like I would treat it as if it was my own. And so, um, and it works well for the other companies. Like a lot of companies. At least when I first got here, I was very hesitant to like have a champion that's also a champion in other places. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't want, I don't want uh, him wearing my belt there, there, there. But I mean, really, what it does is it uh, legitimizes, it raises everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So like, if I'm a champion at Warzone and then I win the Kingdom Championship, oh, the Kingdom must be up yeah. there in Warzone. Yeah. Right? So, um, it's all about that kind of perception, um, and, and I'm privileged and honoured that people see me in that position and that I can do that. Well, the city, you had the Underworld Championship as well in a hard fought match with Craig Bull, Pitbull, which was fantastic. And you're the Warzone Wrestling Champion, so mate, you have absolutely smashed it here. It's my, been a good 2019. My favourite design of the championship belt in this country. I just, I just the Warzone, yeah. It's beautiful that way. And we're, we're, the world's beautiful as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's I, I know how much that bastard costs as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not as much as that. Oh, really? Not as much as yeah. that. Like, as much as even that. if we just compare the belts, um, this is a three plate, main plate, two side plates. 
this is a five plate, main plate and two side plates on each side. Um, and I was only just pointing this out to the gentleman oh, just today, but this little circle right here has a little Australian map inside of it. It's tiny little details, lots of little uh, intricate detailing through here. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's a funny thing because um, I think when you first get into wrestling, you think, yeah, I want to be a champion, yeah, I want it, like, that's really cool. And not that it's not, but it's that I appreciate it on a different level. In the sense that, yes, I'm the champion, yes, it's really cool, but it's not just about having that. It's not about, like, I don't wear them places. I, don't, I certainly don't put them for show yeah. in my apartment. You won't be going out to a nightclub with the belt. Oh, check it out, guys, I'm a champ. Yeah, yeah no, right? you should do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get at least one free drink. Especially so, if you're wearing your speedos. Well, this, yeah, this is the other side of it, too. Um, so, um, but yeah, I, the, the side of it that I enjoy is the fact that, yes, people are willing to put their faith in me. I take being the face of the promotion seriously. Um, and when the time comes, if the time comes where I lose the championship, so that we make it mean something. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, that's enough time for us today. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for giving me a thousand dollars to win the other world championship too. I really appreciate it. Um, and we'll be back at No Holds Barred.